good morning friends and welcome to my channel. I'm Crystal and this is Homemaking on the Homestead. And today, in, in today's video, I am so excited because I have been wanting to do this for a while. I got this cookbook uh, a little while back and it is called Cooking from a Quilt Country and it is a wonderful, beautiful book full of gorgeous pictures, but more than that, it is full of Amish and Mennonite recipes. And I have been wanting to make a full meal using as many recipes as possible from this book, and today is the day. So I spent some time yesterday going through the cookbook, trying to find as many recipes that I could that sounded like good recipes and also utilized foods that I already had in my house because I'm not planning to go grocery shopping yet for another few days. So I needed to kind of be creative with whatever I had already. And that's what I love about these recipes in the book is that a lot of them are just basic staples that you and I most likely would have in our cupboards, refrigerator, freezer, pantry. Okay, so here is the menu that I picked. We are going to have barbecued chicken, hot cabbage salad, overnight butter dinner rolls, and a brown sugar pie. Now, both the chicken and the dinner rolls need to sit in the refrigerator overnight. So my plan today is to get the marinade made up, put it on the chicken, stick that in the refrigerator, get the dinner rolls made to, the, to a certain point in the recipe, and then they need to be put into the refrigerator overnight. And I am going to make the brown sugar pie. Uh, because we will still be able to enjoy it tomorrow night for dessert. Anyway, that is my plan. So I'm going to get going on this, and of course, it's going to take me two days to do this, but you guys will see this all in one video, and you will see this amazing, hopefully amazing, Amish meal. Okay, ladies, let's get in the kitchen here and start doing some cooking and some baking. The first thing that I am going to do this morning is I am going to make our brown sugar pie. And I am going to be using the pat and pan pie crust recipe that uh, I've, I've done this recipe now two or three times. It is so great because you mix everything right in your pie plate, push it into place, and no rolling, no nothing, and it is a fantastic recipe. To begin with, you pour in your flour, your salt, a little bit of sugar, all into the pie plate, and using your fingers, you just kind of gently mix all that up. Then you add your oil and milk into a measuring cup, use a fork, and just mix it together real good until it looks nice and creamy. And then all at once, you just pour that right over your flour and taking that fork again and mixing it all up, getting as much of the flour absorbed into the mo into the liquid as you possibly can. Once you've gotten that far, then you can start just using your hands and combining it and mixing it up. Once all the flour has been incorporated well, then you just start forming the pie crust by pushing it all together, patting around the bottom and the edges, and it really doesn't take any time at all. Okay, there we go. We have a pie crust, all made in one pie pan. I can't, it's so simple, I cannot believe it. By the way, all the recipes for this entire video will be posted below in the description box. Now, I'm gonna make the brown sugar filling. This also is another super easy recipe. You put your brown sugar into your mixing bowl along with a couple eggs and some vanilla and some flour and salt and a little bit of milk. And there you go. You just start mixing that up until everything is nice and smooth. I should mention to you that this recipe for the brown sugar pie is the only one that is not from the cookbook. I will post a link to this. I've made this one before and it is an excellent recipe and that's why I'm using it. it is an Amish brown sugar pie though. Now you pour it into your pie crust and stick it in the oven to bake. Now that I have the brown sugar pie in the oven, it's got to cook for about 35 to 45 minutes and I have got some dishes over here that I'm going to wash up and then start making the bread dough. The cookbook says that this is a no need bread dough and I did have my dough hook in there but found that the dough is very soft so it was a little bit different than anything I've worked with before but after proofing my yeast to make sure it was good I added the rest of the ingredients into the bowl along with some flour and the sugar melted butter and I just kept mixing and as you can see it never really forms a solid dough it is just kind of sticky. I was really tempted to add more flour, but wanting to try to just follow the recipe as much as possible, 
I did not do that. I covered it so that it could rise until doubled in size. And about that time, my pie was out of the oven. And there you have it, one brown sugar pie. Now it was time to start working on the chicken. And I am using boneless, skinless chicken thighs because that's what I had. And I had was certain that I had filmed myself making the barbecue sauce, but I did not. And I apologize for that. I'm not sure what happened, but this is not a tomato based barbecue sauce it is a vinegar based barbecue sauce uh, so that was new for me I had never done that before but once I had my sauce all mixed up I just poured that over my chicken pieces and covered them in plastic wrap to put them in the refrigerator where they were going to sit and marinate overnight at this point my dough had definitely doubled in size and so I just ran my mixer one more time to uh, punch that down and then put it into a bowl as you can see it's very sticky very soft uh, I ended up using uh, some of my uh, spray avocado spray there and just kind of coating that coating my fingers just to make it a little bit easier to work with covered that and also put that into the refrigerator to sit overnight. Okay, I am back for day two now. And behind me, I have my dinner rolls that I pulled out of the refrigerator, I don't know, about an hour, hour and a half back. I Something like that, just to let them come up to room temperature a little. It didn't actually say you needed to do that, but we'll see. I'm gonna move on to that. I also pulled out my cabbage. And unfortunately, uh, my cabbage salad called for bacon, which I thought sounded amazing. And I went digging around in my freezer and I do not have any bacon. So what happened there? Don't know. <laughs> so I do have some bacon grease because I saved my bacon grease. So I will be sauteing up the onions for that in my bacon grease just to give it that flavor. But we're going to roll with this anyway. So let's get started with day two and wrap up this meal. I should also say too that I only made a half recipe for these dinner rolls. I can't remember now if I actually mentioned that. Uh, it made 30 to 32 rolls, which was too much for me. So I decided that we would, I would just make a half a roll, half a batch, which will be more than enough for the two of us for probably a couple, two, three meals or some in the freezer. Also, this recipe has you rolling this out like you would for cinnamon rolls, putting lots of butter on them. And then when you roll them up and cut them like you would for cinnamon rolls, you are supposed to put them into muffin tins to bake them in the oven. I'm not doing that. I am going to be just putting them into a nine by 13 pan. And I think that should be just fine. Because this uh, bread dough, as you can see, is pretty soft and kind of sticky. I'm gonna just spray my countertop with some uh, oil spray. That'll just keep it from sticking too bad. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of this garlic and herb seasoning on it before I roll it up. Now it was time to cover the rolls and let them rise. And while that was happening, I'm moving on to the hot cabbage salad. I'm adding a carrot to it, which was not in the original recipe, but I thought the color would be good in the and the flavor. You have to core and cut up your cabbage uh, coarsely, slice it. I used the slicing disc on my food processor and for the carrots, I decided to grate them. The recipe called for regular onions and I just had these green onions that I needed to use up, so I substituted that. I added my bacon grease, a little bit more oil to my pan and put those green onions in there and soften them up a bit until they turn brown. At that point, it was time to add the cabbage, or in my case, the cabbage and the carrots and the spices, which are basically salt, pepper, and a little bit of sugar. The recipe also calls for some apple cider vinegar and water, which I had pre-measured, and you add that into it. And you just want to mix this salad up and let it cook until your cabbage starts to wilt. You don't, you still want to leave it a little crunchy because it is a salad. 
Okay, my dinner rolls are have risen and it was time to pop them in the oven. They cook at 400 degrees. The recipe says 8 to 10 minutes. I needed to go closer to 20 minutes before I felt like they were nice and golden brown. But while that was happening, I pulled my chicken out and lined a big jelly roll pan with some foil to put my chicken out on. Uh, the recipe on this one tells you to grill them, but the weather that day was not grilling weather, so I decided I would put them under the broiler. You pour the sauce over the top, and I put mine in the broiler for about, under the broiler for about seven to eight minutes. And at this point, everything is looking pretty much done. Uh, when the rolls do come out, you need to butter them give them a little extra butter on the top Ooh, there's the chicken it was delicious uh, of course if you would use chicken breasts that was what the recipe said you would have needed to probably broil them a little bit longer and I dished up a plate to show you guys this meal not only looked pretty but let me tell you it tasted delicious and we really enjoyed it that night for dinner okay there you go I have finished my Amish Mennonite meal and these recipes are absolutely delicious. I have tried everything. I'll show you the plate of food. It just it is wonderful. I gotta show you this too. These dinner rolls, okay? I mean we are talking super soft, buttery, and amazing. So I had to try those right away <laughs> because there's nothing like good home fresh baked bread, right? These are great. And uh, the pie actually turned out delicious. We had it last night. It got a little bit crusty on the top, but that can happen and the pie is just fine. Um, it reminds me a lot of pecan pie, but without the pecans. I think it would taste great with some whipped cream, some vanilla ice cream or something like that, but we enjoyed it as is last night and we'll enjoy it again tonight. So I really hope that you enjoyed coming along with me on this video as I cook some meals from this cookbook. Uh, these were all delicious. Uh, I will definitely be looking for more recipes to try in here be, uh, because I wrote a whole list down of possibilities to try so I will use it again just a delicious cookbook if you like basic simple foods uh, like the Amish and the Mennonite can often cook it's not always that way but for the most part they cook some pretty good uh, plain basic foods and we are very much right now looking forward to eating this up so Thank you so much for joining me today on this video and I hope you found it enjoyable and like I said at the beginning, recipes are down in the description box so if you want to try any of these recipes you can. If I made any changes I will note that as well. And I hope you all have an amazing day today and a wonderful week ahead and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye bye.